only my interpretation. Sure, sure. The good person kills the bad person, meaning that it is the good Italian Americans who have to kill, destroy the image of the delinquent, the, the mafia uh, aspect or characteristic of the Italian American in this country. And I think you basically foresee there that the good will destroy the, uh, the bad person. Well, okay. and, the, and then as when Johnny, in conversation with Johnny, you present already a mafioso, a capo, Godfather, who is more humanized. Therefore, you are implementing that idea of we, you as a writer, dest are destroying the image of the bad characteristic, uh, which is the mafia people or the boss or the, the criminal element in our society. Uh, yes, that is that's a sound, that's a legitimate. Okay. Uh, let me let me um, let me let me just say this. Look. I, I do not, I would like it not to be uh, presented that I'm a moralist or there's a moral good and bad here. No, 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 no. No, I no, no, I mean, no, but it's important in this mm -hmm. sense. The question is, and I think it's a question that every Italian American interested in his or her own culture should ask, and it is, and I don't have the, there may be different answers, is, how do we go about doing that in our lives? Yeah. I, I can only really write and teach and do you know different spins and stretch it and present to the non-Italian American or Italophile public some how could I say alternatives? To, I'm talking now yeah, about yeah, yeah. I'm talking about media now. I mean, on a radio show, New York and Company, Leonard Lopez. He started talking about myth, and I started saying, "Gee, you know, I was hoping to present, uh, to to how to present, um, to spread, to leaven that the gangster is not the center." So he said, "You mean such a thing exists?" Now I am not going to do what Cuomo had done and say there's no such thing. No such I mean that's ridiculous. But what I'm saying is, is that it is a part of it. I think that's the reality that we have it's part of it and yet we have to work we have to work with it not around it or forget about mm -hmm. it but with it I mean the question is I mean really what do we do I mean what does one what can one do I think it's important to support artists of Italian mm -hmm. America to support their children who have these tendencies Okay, I think that's some of the things. Yeah, yeah, and, and I believe that the the story of the two Italians, you are simply presenting the the possibility that the Italian Americans one day will wake up and be not only against because there is this kind of possibility of being a criminal, but as a as a group, no, as an individual, yes, you could be criminal, but as a group, I think uh, it's an image that should be changing, and probably the prospect of that story to Italians addresses to to that uh, a question or and answers it by saying, eventually one day, the good of us in us will overtake that aspect which is criminal, at least. Uh, in the institutionalized, I, I, I hope so. You know, and also another point about the uh, that story was written in, uh, in the early '80s. Since then, there has been a great deal of work. There are Italian American organizations, writers, and yeah. you know, scholars. You know, anthologies and so forth. Don't forget, at that time, there was really very little. I mean, you know, mm. we, we were not educated. We didn't know who John Fonte was. Yeah, we didn't yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. And tell me one thing: uh, in uh, the Valentino and the Great Italians, you uh, do present uh, Frank Sinatra. Right. Uh, obviously, at one point, uh, you say that you even met Lucky Luciano, who <laughs> explains to you. Was it true, you ask, was it true that uh, Frank Sinatra brought a, a, a bag full of money, money to Lucky Luciano? To, to Lucky Havana, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe so you your want to talk about is, is that true? <laughs> yeah, because it's so realistic. At you. you know, on my tombstone, you, did you meet on the my tombstone there's going to be everything was true. All right? 
Well, you see, even with the title here, uh, Frank, uh, Professor Peter Caravetta mm -hmm. from Queen's mm -hmm. College, is, and I wrote a uh, book review of his, and he says, even from the title itself, Valentina and the Great Italian, it says, according to Anthony Valerio, mm -hmm. it's a perplexing because you don't know if it's telling the story by Anthony Valerio or is according to, that means I, I see it as Valentina and the Great Italian, according to Anthony Valerio, is almost biblical in saying the uh, gospel according to Matthew. Here you say yeah. the truth according to me, according to... Uh, there are some people who take the Bible literally, you know. Uh, okay. I, I want to answer your question, and I want to do a little something in homage. Yeah. Uh, the uncle who was the model for that particular story. He grew up with Lucky Luciano on the Lower East Side. And he was uh, the husband of a very dear aunt of mine. And it was said at one point was a driver. And his daughter became a uh, kind of second mother to me, and she passed away. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, they're in the family, there was... But do we, here you actually met in a car, well, he met in a car. That, what that was, was, so there had been early stories about my uncle growing up. In fact, the story was a watch was stolen in the neighborhood, and his mother went to the Lucianas, and of course got the watch back in 10 seconds, right? <laughs> uh, but the, um, no, no, there was a replacement. I can't mention, you know what I mean? There was names changed. I mean, fiction writers transform. Yeah, yeah. So if another real person who was in the public eye came, I wasn't going to mention that he was a friend of my father's. Yeah, sure. Although there's a bit in there with Frankie Yale, who uh, my grandfather was his locksmith. And Frankie Uwale was uh, killed by a Thompson submachine gun when it was first introduced by mm -hmm. Capone in Chicago. Frankie Yale. Uh, uh, lived in Brooklyn. I want to say this about that, that what you don't hear about is this. During the 30s, during the Depression, what uh, businessmen, so-called gangsters like Frankie Yale and my grandfather did was that they, they went around the neighborhood and fed the people food. They brought around food, boxes of food. So it was somewhat of a socialist movement, you have mm. to understand, you know, where these uh, so-called... Were they fearful people like, uh, let's say, uh, Godfather? These people were not uh, fearful people. Absolutely. Or feared. Well, look, I was. I mean, I, I feared, feared and not feared. Well, well, these were men, these were men. It was a community, and people mm -hmm. held who had more would it bring food and. Anyway, and so I want to talk about the Sinatra. Well, what I want to do is yeah. well, that was what happened. What I, uh, you know, as we speak, he's extremely ill, and um, in my scrapbook is a uh, a thank you note from his office, and and in uh, gold script and signed Frank Sinatra. And, and in homage and dedication, I just wanted, there's one image I'd like to read from uh, the piece called Frank Sinatra, which is, uh, was um, this uncle I had talked about who had known Lucky Luciano and his wife Anna, my aunt. They had a daughter, Alice, and she's had a hard life. Her husband died in an accident at an early age. She raised two children on her own, tried this man and that one. Out of spite, she married a cop who on his wedding night turned out to be a virgin. She got cancer and beat it. Then she married a good man named Jake. They're in their 60s now, and recently they went to Atlantic City to see Frank Sinatra. Alice called me. When he was just about to sing, holding the mic, he dropped his shoulder, and I couldn't help myself. I got up and screamed, Frankie, Frankie. I just wanted to uh, read that image uh -huh. uh, from a very beloved cousin who passed away. Uh, I see. And also uh, to a very important, important international, I mean, I don't have to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's one other thing I would like you to talk about, is that 